Hey, what's up guys? Today I want to talk about springs. What is a spring? So essentially if we have some uh, target point that we want something to go to, let's say it's this, this thing, um, what's going to happen is the thing is going to make its way towards the point, but at a certain speed, call that S, and it's going to go past and oscillate back and it's going to do a little something like this until it reaches kind of the point here. And let's just say it's on this axis. Okay, so that's kind of the basic idea of a spring, but you can apply it in uh, one dimension, two dimensions, three dimensions. Uh, it's very nice because as the spring is moving, we can change the target. So let's say it's here originally. Let's say the target is now this distance away here. It's a, the spring is going to come in and we're going to come to here and then let's say we change it here it's going to go there and it's going to catch up and so if we change our target any time over the course of the spring it's going to adjust this is super nice because if we start this spring motion our spring is not going to be locked in to any sort of path that it needs to follow it's just gonna it's just gonna move over time and so if we want to change our goal repeatedly um the spring is going to reflect that so what are some applications that we can put this to work on uh, we could use this for some sort of shape, and this is a 1D spring. This could be a 1D lateral movement, so like this, it could be a 1D shape. You could also use this for following some point, and that could be a 2D or a 3D application. So what I'll do is I'll show you applications for each of these. Uh, for shake, I'll show you a UI shake. For following, we'll have hat following you in 3D space. So let's get to it. Okay, so I'm here in a place that I quickly wrote up before I started the video. And this is my button script that I have here. Ugh, I hate this new AI assistant. I have this new button script here in this button. Essentially what it does is we use uh, tweening to tween the button back and forth. And right now you click it and it kind of looks a little jittery. It's not super smooth. Let's try and replace it with a spring. Okay, so the spring I'm using is a uh, Quenty spring from his Nevermore engine. I really like it because it'll update the spring whenever you um, you don't have to hook the spring into any sort of update method it'll just update based off whatever time you use the spring I'll have a download of the place if you want to get the specific module the one he has posted right now is a little newer it might be better um, but this is a more older one that I have in my module loader. Okay, so I've quickly written a spring implementation of what it would look like to use a spring to make the button shake and it's going to definitely be more code, but you're going to have more fine-tuned control over the way the button behaves. So what I've done is I've created a new spring, and I've set the value as a one-dimensional value with zero. I've set the speed to 40 and the damper to 0.5. So this means that it's going to move. 40 is generally pretty fast. You're just going to have to play around with the values to get a feel for it. And then damper of 0.5 means that it's going to lose about half of its energy as it goes along. That's the way I like to think about it. <clears throat> and the center is the, just the center of the screen. This is where the button is centered originally. And so what happens is when we click the button, we give the spring a velocity of 500. That means that the spring is going to want to move in the positive direction with um, 500 units per second. And so uh, what happens is that every, um, every frame we reposition the button such that we take the spring position and create a pixel offset and we add that offset to the center position so that when the spring starts it's at zero and it'll just be sitting at the center of the screen we'll click it it'll do a shake and it'll move back to being at zero so what i've got here is i click the button and it does a little does a little shake and if i want to i can turn the speed way down and we should see that it'll shake a lot slower. I could also turn the damper way up. And you can see that it's a little more sharp. Yeah. Essentially what the damper does is it's how much is the spring going to move past the target? So with a damper of one, the spring is critically damped. That means that when you click and you activate the spring, it's going to move to the right 
and then it's going to stop as soon as it gets back to zero and it's going to move at kind of a more linear rate. If we set the damper to lower than one, that means the spring is going to be under damped and that means the spring is going to move beyond the target. So it'll go right, left, and it'll keep moving back and forth. If I over damp the spring and I increase the damper beyond one, you can see that it quickly moves, juts away, but then it slowly comes back. So that's the different damping on the spring. And we set the target here to be zero because we want the button to have no offset. Okay, so that was the first application. Let's look at a 3D following application. Okay, so what I've written here is a pet script. And so uh, I've got some functions here and I'll just run through them, talk about what they do. So this first one gets the uh, position of where the pet should be. Um, all it does is get the look direction of the character and return some offset that's up and behind the player. This function gets the look direction of the player. Um, this function here will just create a new pet. So we clone this pet model, which is just a pink orb, and we create a new pet spring. Uh, it's got a 7 speed and a 0.9 damper, so that means the pet should kind of go beyond the target and come back a little bit. Um, I have two connections here. Um, the first one here, the step connection, computes the position of the pet. So it gets the target position and then it adds a, an offset here using sign. And you'll see what that adds. It kind of adds a floating effect, um, which makes it seem a little more realistic. And then in the heartbeat here, after the frame is rendered, we get the target and the position and the velocity, all sorts of stuff. And um, we just set the uh, C frame of the pet to the current position of the spring. So now we should see that if I run it, the pet should follow behind us and it should do uh, kind of a float behind me. So you can see here it, uh, it floats up and down and that's the sign in action. And then if I start walking around, it should follow behind me and try and kind of reach this point back here. And it does. And so what I can do is I can lower, oops, this is the wrong file. What I can do here is I can actually lower the speed or the damper here to make the pet kind of lag behind a little bit, a little slower. It'll catch up and kind of go beyond and then work to get back to this point here that it should be moving around. And you'll see that if I jump, the pet will follow me up. It'll follow me down, all that stuff. And then if I stop, it should realign itself. And so I can turn the speed way up and you'll see that it's oh it's bouncing around and that's because it's got a really high speed so when i turn here it's jumping way beyond the target point but because the damper is so low it's um it's going to wiggle around that point but then it's eventually going to reach it this might be cool if you wanted to make like a, an antenna effect or maybe like a balloon effect and on the other hand here i'll show the overdamped, and you'll see that the pet as i run here it's going to slow down before it reaches the target point. Instead of overshooting, it's actually going to kind of undershoot and slowly work its way to the target position. And maybe this is the intended behavior that you want. Okay, so that was a quick application for um, following in 3D space. In 2D, you could do the same thing, uh, maybe in a GUI, if you wanted something to follow your mouse. So that was Springs. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, obviously, I haven't been uploading. That's just because... Um, this isn't really a job for me. It's just kind of something I do for fun whenever I have a cool idea and I want to make something, uh, summer's coming up and I probably won't make anything over the summer cause I'm going to be, um, just busy with real life. So anyway, thank you guys. If you enjoyed the video, uh, drop a like, leave a comment of what you want to see, how you feel, uh, if you've missed me, etc. Have a good day.